around the world and here at home, bringing relief, hope, and the life-changing message of Jesus. You're listening to the Mize Missions Podcast with Terry Mize. Hello, everyone. God bless you, and welcome today to Terry Mize Ministries Podcast. We're so glad to have you, and Terry and I look forward to sharing with you today some marvelous things from the Word of God that we know will bring fruit and ministry, recovery and comfort uh, to your life. And then we also hope it just sparks desire to use your own faith and believe God by your own words, by what will uh, be created in your life by the supernatural power of God. Uh, We always want you to know you're welcome to invite friends and family to join us here. We uh, publish a brand new broadcast every Wednesday. And then also you can go on to Terry Mize Ministries uh, dot org, our website, and all of our podcasts are there ica- <laughs> archived, uh, excuse me, there for your benefit. So we want you to take advantage of all of these things that we have for you. And we have other products of books and CDs that are available to you. And we just want to make it easy for you to receive from the Word of God. Um, Terry has a brand new CD out, and we would like to make that as an offer to you. Um, It was a a CD he did about a month ago. It was just outstanding, and it has to do with God creating whatever you say out of your mouth. You will have what you say. And it was sort of in one CD, an encyclopedia of everything you needed to know about confession. I've told several pastors, um, I said, if you would put this CD in your new membership class, it will put your brand new members a hundred miles down the road from what any of the rest of us ever learned had to pick out bit by bit in our personal growth about learning how to speak according to the will of God. And when you say God's word, you will have what God's word promises. So I invite you to just write in. If you'll contact us, we'll send it to you free of charge. We look forward to hearing from you and hope you take advantage of that offer. Darling, go ahead and let's talk to the folks today about the promises of God. Sure. And if you're going to take advantage of that offer, then let me give you a phone number. The office is 918 392 And you can talk to Hannah and uh, we'll send you that out uh, for no charge whatsoever, just as our gift to you. And Renee, I, that was an exciting message. You know, we'd just been back from Romania about two or three days whenever we ministered right, that. Right. And uh, we had such a great meeting, a uh, great time in Romania with the gypsy pastors. We had, we had brought in a hundred gypsy pastors and their wives. That's right. So we had over 200 people right. uh, plus us, uh, a few extra uh, the, the, the <laughs> fire marshal was only about, the fi- yeah, the fire yeah. marshal was only about 206 people in that room. And we, I think fudged a little bit, but, uh, uh, just spent night and day session just all day, uh, long, you know, uh, ministering the word of God to those gypsy pastors and they were receiving and, and just excited and thrilled. And, and, uh, you know, they're in revival all over Europe. Uh, that, that bunch there in Romania has gotten such revival and built over 400 churches since we've been ministering to them and the revival breaking out among gypsies all over Europe. That's true. And uh, this next year, we're actually looking at doing a meeting. Probably, maybe we'll go to Holland, uh, to the Netherlands. And uh, there's a friend there that has a huge conference center. And uh, we might just go there. I'm really praying about it and, and start and just invite gypsies from all over Europe. Europe. Instead That's of just right. doing Romania only. Uh, right. and about these gypsy pastors from all over Europe to come. You know, my dear friend T.L. Osborne, and some of you people listening today will know who T.L. was, but T.L. Uh, has been gone a, a couple of years now, and uh, well, three years, I guess now. And um, But T.L. and Daisy Osborne were the, some of the greatest people that ever graced the planet and some of the greatest missionaries that ever graced the planet and just had miracles and miracles and, and evangelistic and miracle crusades all over the world. Uh, from from back in the from back in the fifties, um, and and so um, uh, T L was just and Daisy were just dear friends of mine, personal friends. Uh, been in their home, they've been in my home, and and just uh, you know knew my kids, and and we just we, we just loved them for for forever, and um, and so we were uh, thinking about T L the other day, and I was telling some people about some of the some of his stories and. And it was the miracles of God that made the difference in their ministry. They had actually gone to, uh, gotten saved and filled the Holy Spirit and loved God and got a call to missions and and uh, uh, actually moved to the nation of India. Uh, but they weren't accomplishing anything. They just were they were meeting uh, failure, really, uh, because, uh, t- I mean, T.L. told me this out of his own mouth numbers of times, told me the testimony and the stories. 
But he said, you know, they'd get up and preach about about Jehovah God and about Jesus as his son. Uh, and yet uh, the Hindu religion there in India has 330 million gods. If you can, I know you can't imagine that, 330 million gods. And then, of course, there's the, the Islamic uh, community there. And so T.L. was ministering, Daisy, T.L. and Daisy were ministering to Hindus with 330 million gods and then to Muslims, you know, with with uh, uh, Allah as God and Muhammad as his prophet. And so they'd get up and preach, and then they'd take such flack from the other religions, you know. Right. And, uh, you know, T.L. said, you know, I preached, uh, I, I'd say Jehovah is God, and they'd say Allah is God, or, or one of these 330 million gods are God. And I'd say, yeah, but here's his holy book, and they'd say, well, here's our holy book. And he'd say, yeah, but mine has black leather on it, and they'd say, ours has black leather on it. He'd say, well, mine has gold edges on it. And they'd say, well, so does ours. Ours has gold edges. He said, well, mine has two little black ribbons in it. And they'd say, well, ours has little ribbons in it, too. <laughs> and, and and nobody could prove it. You know, right, T.L. Right. couldn't prove it, and, and, and the Muslims couldn't prove it, or the Hindus couldn't prove it. And so T.L. and Daisy came home defeated. From that first uh, that, that missionary That's right. that first missionary trip, right. they came home absolutely defeated. And T.L. made a statement to me about that. And some of you young missionaries listen to this, or maybe some of you older missionaries listen to this, because T.L. said this to me way back decades ago. And he said, you know, Terry, it's as important for a missionary to know when to come off the field as it is for him to know when to go on the field. And he right, said, had we just right. stayed there and kept butting our head against the wall and just kept being attacked by these people, he said, even though we love God and we were trying to do something for God, he said, we'd have died and not accomplished our, our calling for God, not accomplished what God wanted us to do. No, and, no. of course, of course, they became the greatest missionaries on the planet, right. you know, but yet they would not have. So they came home, came home in defeat. And uh, and yet they were up in Portland, Oregon, and, and uh, went to a meeting. So a, a, a minister came to town. Uh, uh, with a miracle healing ministry. Uh, in fact, it was William Branham. T.L. didn't always like to say who it was, but it was right. William Branham William who it Branham. was. Mm -hmm. And uh, when Brother Branham had just an awesome, tremendous, powerful miracle ministry and, and, and prophetic ministry. And, of course, he got off in later years and got into some error, and so people don't like to talk about him much. But my, my, the ministry he had when he was uh, when he was on the Word and, and, and doing right and straight. Uh, and, and so T.L. and Daisy watched him. Uh, minister the word of God, and then call people up for prayer, lay hands on them, and those people got uh, healed. I mean, they saw miracles, and they got so excited and said to each other, that's what we were missing in India. They said, now we know what to do. Right. And so they went back and, uh, of course, went all over the world. I mean, it's all history now. Went all over the world, all over the nations, and had these huge, huge crusades with salvation and with miracles, powerful miracles of God, uh, dead raised, blind eyes open, all those powerful miracles from the New Testament. Uh, and, and so miracles, uh, uh, I think it was John G. Lake that said, miracles are the dinner bell to the world. Right. And so you begin to ring that dinner bell, dinner bell, and they'll come to hear the gospel. And so uh, they begin to operate in the healing miracles and healings and miracles and and so on and so forth. I forgot my train of thought now why I brought up Teal in the first place, but <laughs> but that was a good story anyway, wasn't it? <laughs> it was a wonderful story, and I just always feel like we we need to remember the foundation of the people that we've been built on, or people that were that were tough enough to stand. And well, you know, it's the God. pioneers that take the yeah. arrows. I mean, the, yeah. you know, it's the it's the Marines that hit the beachhead, get there first, to make it possible for everybody else to well, come. And, and that's what missionaries are. Really, the really the anointing and the office of the apostle is that is that of the Marine. Is that hit the beachhead first, get there first, and make it possible for the for the prophet to come and the evangelist to come and the and the pastor and the teacher to come and so on and so forth. Uh, but that was just, they were such a tremendous blessing in my life as personal friends and then such a tremendous blessing to the world. But it's all based on the fact that Jesus is alive and Jesus does miracles. No, and and that's, it, it, that doesn't ever change. The world needs that more today than, than they've ever needed it before. And there's certainly more population on the planet. More people need Jesus. There's more, there's more sin. <laughs> there's more bad people. Uh, just well, I know what I was going to say about TL. My goodness. We were talking about, talking about the gypsies. Yeah. And TL had said to me decades and decades ago, he said, Terry, when you go to Europe, he said, always minister to the gypsies. He said, you know, thank God for the Europeans and you can minister to the Europeans. But he said, he said, if you'll reach out to those gypsies, he said, they, they're nomads, they travel everywhere. And he said, they will, they will take the gospel and do the gospel. So my point was that we had just come back from, 
Romania, where we had these hundred pastors and their wives, where we paid their lodge and their food and taught them the word of God. And now we're, we're looking at having a meeting in Holland in the right. Netherlands and just bring gypsies from all over everywhere mm-hmm. and uh, preach the word of God to them and minister to them because it's that word that's going to make the difference. It's that word that absolutely uh, changes lives. There is no God like Jehovah. We've that's talked right. about that on a lot of different podcasts. If, you, if you're God shopping or looking for gods, right. the only true God, the only living God is Jehovah God and his son, Jesus. And that's the proof of it all is in the miraculous. And so we are constantly on the, you know, on the air talking about this in podcasts that in the churches that we minister in, uh, in Terry's newsletter that he does constantly praying for people on the phone in contact with pastors and missionaries and partners of this ministry, just to remind people all the time, our declarations are that our God is alive that he, there is no God like Jehovah, but it's not in the militant sense of a religious uh, concept of that if you don't believe our God and we're going to hurt you or no, do something. Not. No, it's just, this, this is a declaration. This is a statement. This is an announcement to you. And it's not to threaten anyone. And it's not certainly not to debate or argue with people about it. But when you see the supernatural power of God working to, on behalf of the human race to help people uh, learn how to be healed in their bodies, to have their physical needs met, to be their lives be redeemed from destruction. Absolutely. Like Psalm 103 says, and that your children will be blessed and prosperous like the Bible teaches. Uh, there's all of these things. You know, so religion so many times uh, puts a fence around what it believes, doesn't want to let anybody in that's other than people that are just like them, and then they want to threaten and intimidate anybody who is not like them. Sure. And and then they, I always said that the more rules they have, uh, the worse the religion is, and then the the more most of the rules are for the women, and they end up just trying to make it, it's just man's opinion made up a bunch of stuff that just is so prejudiced towards everybody out there in the world, anyone in in their sphere of influence, and they they just try to intimidate. If religion wants to intimidate and challenge and argue and debate and be prejudiced and sectarian and opinionated about everybody and anybody that's not like them. And yet Christianity is the good news of we have the supernatural. God, God can raise the dead. He can open blind eyes. <laughs> he can make crazy people be, be smart. I mean, he, God can do things in the mind. I was just looking at, I was reading some things this week in First Peter, and it was so wonderful to me about this. I was just going to read this one verse over here where Peter says, but in the end, the culmination of all things that has come near now. In other words, we're living now in these last days. This is what we need to know. He said, keep sound-minded, self-restrained, and alert, therefore, for the practice of prayer. And he says, then, and above all things, have intense and unfailing love for one another, for love covers a multitude of sins, forgives and disregards the offenses of others, and practice hospitality. He goes on down to talk about serving people, loving people. But the but the end of it all, he said, is so that you can have intense, you can have very successful prayers. Like you were talking about Brother Osborne and them, being able to go back and pray over the sick, lay hands on the sick, and see miracles. Absolutely. And that's the purpose and practice of prayer. It's not just begging God or God's not just wanting us to use all of our time telling, worshiping him and praising him, which we do. We love to spend time in fellowship with the Lord, but it's that, that practice of prayer, commanding, demanding, taking authority over the adversity in someone's life, and then calling in by faith, the blessing of God in their life. And we do that by prayer and by declaration. And that's our job as believers. No, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, talking about T.L. and Daisy and then, of course, uh, other broadcasts, we mentioned, you know, Brother Osteen, John Osteen, Joel's daddy. And, and we've talked about Brother Hagen a lot. And, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, we just can't help ourselves but talk <laughs> about those guys. Number That's one, right. n- number That's one, right. they were my friends. You know, they were they're people that I, I knew personally. You know, we talked to a doctor this week in Tulsa and uh, and the doctor said to me, he said, uh, I said, where do you do your, your, your surgeries and, you know, what hospital do you use? He said, he said, you know what we do? He said, we use the, the city of faith complex that, uh, that Oral Roberts built. He said, we do a hundred surgeries a day uh, there in that, in that medical complex. And a lot of people don't even know it's a medical complex anymore. And he right. made the statement. He said, you know, I think if Oral Roberts was still alive, he'd be real pleased that we that we do that. Right. And I said, Oh, I know he would. I said, Oral was a personal friend of mine. He looked up and said, really? 
And I said, yeah, you didn't know him. You weren't at City of Faith back in those days. He said, no, no, no. He said, I, I, I wasn't at City of Faith in those days, and I didn't know uh, Brother Roberts. And I said, well, let's listen, he was a friend of mine. I ate many a meal with him and, and spent a lot of time with him. And, you know, Renee, th- these these men and women that we talk about and, and all the time uh, are so real in our life because we knew them and because they were friends, you know. No, and, that's right. and, and, you know, I, I talked to them and ate meals with them and in and out of their home or they're they in and out of my home. And, 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 and I had a pastor one time, a number of years ago, I was having a, a lunch with a bunch of pastors and, and one of the pastors looked at me and he said, now brother Terry, he said, when you come to my church in a few months, yeah, he had invited me. He said, when you get to my church, he said, don't talk about the old guys. And I said, what? And he said, don't talk about the old guys. He said, my, my church doesn't know my church, but they don't know who the old guys are. And I said, well, what are you talking about? Who do you consider the old guys? He said, well, you know, those guys you talk about all the time. You talk about Brother Hagen, and you talk about, you know, Brother Osteen, and you talk about uh, Lester Summerall and Hilton Sutton, and you talk about Oral Roberts and T.L. Osborne, and you talk about all these old guys. And he said, you know, my, he, you know, he said, my, my church doesn't know who, the, who they are. And I said, well, shame on you, Pastor. I said, if your church doesn't know who the old guys are, I said, then uh, that's your fault. That's, that's not right. their fault. I said, what are you doing, telling all those old guys' sermons and stories and acting like you thought of it yourself? you claiming claiming it for yourself? I said, mm-hmm. we, we need to talk about the old guys. And I said, in fact, Jesus talked about the old guys. Right. Peter talked about the old guys. Paul talked about the old guys. I mean, you won't find much in, in any of those guys that wrote the Bible. They didn't talk about Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. They didn't talk about Isaiah. They didn't talk about Jeremiah. They didn't talk about the prophets of old. They all talked about the old guys. And I love to talk about the old guys because it, it gives a heritage, Renee, and a lineage of where right. we've come from. I mean, we didn't just make this stuff up. Right. And I'd be scared of what we're preaching if I, if I made it up. But, you know, I've, I've made this statement for many times over the years. I said, you know, if it's new, then it's not true. Right. And if it's true, then it's not new. You know, Paul made this That's statement. So he, Paul said, if it, he said, I don't care who comes to preach to you. He said, I don't care if it's us or I don't care if it's an angel from heaven. If they preach to you something that's not written in this book, then let them be accursed. I mean, he talked about himself. He said, even us, if we preach to you something that's exactly. not in this book, exactly. let us be accursed. If an angel from heaven preaches to you something that's not in this book, let him be accursed. The Bible is the cornerstone. It's the no, foundation. Right. It's, it's right. it, We always go back to the word of God. And, uh, and we look to those old guys. We look and say, hey, I know where I got what I got right. because I know where my fathers got what they got. Right. You know, and we, we talk about Brother Osteen and, and, and uh, you know, and, and you and Dean knew Brother Osteen so well. Of course, I knew Brother Osteen since I was 15 years old. And uh, Dean, your your first husband who's in heaven today, Dean was actually raised in that church from a, from a baby and uh, knew Brother Osteen so well. And, of course, now Lakewood Church is the largest church in America. But the point is, is we, we know where Brother Osteen came from. You know, he he, he received the Holy Spirit uh, in a meeting with, uh, uh, with uh, J.R. Goodwin, Right. And Carmen Goodwin, whom we call Mom and Dad Goodwin, right. well, uh, he, he he received the Holy Spirit from them and, and, and received ministry from them. Well, Renee, they, they were my personal friends. You know, I knew Mom and Dad Goodwin. been in their home many times. You know, Mom Goodwin had been in, in my home many times. And, 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 and I know where, where Brother Osteen got what he got. And then uh, we all talk about Howard Carter. Anytime somebody today wants to know about the gifts of the Spirit, uh, we go read Howard Carter's books because he wrote the books on the gifts of the Spirit. Right. Well, Mom and Dad Goodwin are the one that taught Howard Carter the gifts of the Spirit. Right. And then, of course, Howard Carter and Lester Summer all travel the world together. I mean, you know, so we, we didn't just make this up. We didn't no. just discover this yesterday. We have a lineage. We know where Brother Hagen came from. We know where he got what he got. Right. You know, he was a he was a, a boy uh, dying, given up to die by five doctors incurable disease and God raised him up off of the deathbed yeah, and, right. and, and he, he went into the assemblies of God. Then was a Baptist in the Baptist church and went into the assembly of God church. Then went into what we call, you know, non-denominational charismatic or word of faith. Well, brother Hagen was my dear friend, started Rama Bible training center in, in uh, Tulsa. That's still going on today with his son, Ken jr. Uh, pastor Hagen, we call him. Uh, but you know, we, we know these giants, Right. We know these generals. We know these tremendous men and women of God, and we know where they came from, and we know where they got what they got. And that's what Paul said to Timothy. Paul wrote to Timothy, and he said, Son, listen, I know your grandma. 
Yeah. <laughs> I know your mama. That's right. I know Lois. I know Eunice. I know where you came from, son. Right. And he said, and don't you forget what you've been taught. And don't you forget who taught it to you. Because I myself taught you these things. No, and I personally right. put that's my right. hands that's on right. you. And I personally imparted the gift of God to you. So don't don't you ever forget that. And you preach the word without without compromise, in season, out of season. You preach the word. And you remember where you got what you got. And you remember where you got it from. No, that's right. That's where we are today. You know, I feel like sometimes, Terry, we've talked about this before, about that, that big sign at the zoo when you're trying to find the where the polar bears are or the or you're trying to find where the elephants are. It'll, the little map will tell you, you are here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, we are here. And Second Corinthians, 1 Corinthians uh, 10, 11 10. says, we are those on whom the end of the age has come. And then it says, we are, another verse says, we are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Absolutely. So we are here Ephesians today. We are here to, Ephesians today. Ephesians 2.20, actually. Yeah, and then, you know, like Miriam said, we are alive and, and well as at this day. Uh, to this and day, we, we're still here. We're still here. And so... And we're it. We are the ones yeah. on whom the end of the age if, has come. We're the ones that have got to carry that blood-stained banner uh, of Jesus Christ. We've got to lift up the cross. We've got to declare right. the word of God. And we're going to have to talk about the old guys and not, not just think some pastor. I, I don't want to go hear some pastor that just came from nowhere and preached something. He just got in a dream from eating pizza at night. I, I want a lineage and a heritage. I want to, where did you get that? Where did that come from? That's right. And we always follow it back to the word of God. Say, this is where This is what God said. This is why we believe what we believe. This is why we do what we do. It's about God and his word. Well, it is. And that's why you and I have a heritage of faith. And that's why it's important for you and I to realize that if we've gotten this far with the Bible and the Holy Spirit as our teacher, then you and I, there's more need for the word of God today than there ever has been on the on the planet. There's more Christians on the planet than there ever has been before. There, they, uh, I've heard theologians talk about the fact there may be more Christians on the earth now than there are in heaven. And so with all of us out here on the planet, believing God, teaching the word of God, praying the word of God, commanding with the word of God, how important you and I are to this generation. If there ever was a need for the word of God, it's right now. No, absolutely. And you and I. seven billion people on the planet that have got to be saved. And everybody out there, um, you know, needs to hear the word of God. Christians need to be uh, ministered to and and, and exhorted and comforted and, and, uh, you know, in in, in a lot of ways encouraged all the time to be strong and to stand up for the word of God, especially those, the Bible says, to remember those that are in bonds, Christians that are being tortured, Christians that are being. You know, they say that, that ISIS has killed a million Christians. Yeah. A million, a, a million, million Christians. Christians, just in the last four or five years. Yeah, just in the last several years. And you and I, as Christians here in America and anywhere else that you're listening, I want you to realize how profoundly serious not only the times are, but how much you are needed in these last days. Nobody needs to feel left out. Nobody needs to feel unvalidated, invalidated. You and I together. Uh, when you get full of the Word of God and you get full of the Holy Ghost, uh, you become a force that hell cannot withstand. And it's so important for you and I to speak up, preach the Word of God, realize that the foundation of all those other believers and great men and women of God from ages past are in heaven today cheering us on to oh, do a greater work than what they did in their generation. So tag your it. Uh, you're the ones we're talking to today. Well, we weren't left here just to be cannon fodder for the devil no, and that's the demon right. spirits. <laughs> no, you that's know, we, right. We need to teach believers the word of faith. Be strong. Uh, spiritual authority, dominion. That's so right. So that when they come knocking at the door and saying, hey, are you a Christian? We're going to kill you. We say, hey, my God's bigger than your God and my daddy's bigger than your daddy. And anybody's right. going to be dying around here today. It's not going to be me, but you in the name of Jesus. That's why I, I wanted to encourage folks today to read out of First Peter chapter 4, that whole chapter there, to how to be strong and sound in your mind so that you're, like Terry said, you're not cannon fodder. The Marines have said like bullets, sponges. You're not just out there for somebody to intimidate and berate and bully and uh, just all the time attack. You be strong in the Lord. Rebuke and resist the enemy on every level. Be strong in your prayer life, sound in your mind so that you can do a work for the Lord.
Amen. Amen. We well, better, we, better quit. We, we need to quit today and let you go about your business, but we're so glad you joined us. And remember, you can find us always at terrymize.com and then terrymizeministries.org. You can get uh, all of our products. You can send in your prayer requests. You can find the archived podcast and all of that is available to you we we put them out there for you free for nothing so that you can just hit those podcasts and listen to them and almost put yourself through bible school I want to remind you too about our free cd offer and it's about the fruit of your lips it was just the best that i've heard in a long time anybody minister it's almost an encyclopedia on how to speak accordingly to the word of god and be fruitful and not do what those 10 spies did and give an evil report i just want to encourage all of you get this free cd contact us in our office and we'll be glad to send it out to you free of charge god bless you so much we love you and we look forward to seeing you next time and be uh, in the meantime just always remember that you are more More than than a conqueror. conqueror You've been listening to a MISE Missions podcast. For all the latest updates to our global projects, speaking engagements, and social media, visit us at terrymise.com. You can partner with us to give living bread to dying men around the world. Get involved at terrymise.com. Until next time, thanks for joining us. This has been a presentation of Terry Mize Ministries.